Good morning. Going to uh, going to get right into it. I've got I didn't charge my phone completely last night, so we still got 70%, but that eats up quickly. We've got spry. We've got the phone holder, whatever you call it, Ellie and Taylor. So I'm gonna get right into it and start out before people even sign on because I don't want this to go long. Um, I've, I'm building on. I'm building on three. It says my connection's weak, so I'm just going to move a little bit. Ron Herring, good morning. Um, I'm going on three. Re, uh, this would be three real strong days in a row if we can get it. So I'm going to flip it over. You can see the dogs as I move around and get this position, try to find a good spot. Megan's in, Jeff's in, good morning. Um, so the last two days um, have been have gone well. The day before that would have been Monday it was Monday and it didn't go so well so uh, Monday was I think too many moving parts that got in the way of our session so if you're new to these I want you all to know you can go back and you can watch a ton of them There's, we're up to number 74 so uh, our focus is spry the little puppy here um, but we're also getting some things in and we're utilizing some of our older dogs. Mike Clark, good morning. Krista Yisker, Jason Erickson, Cody Miller, Joel McAllister. Good morning, guys. Our morning group is becoming pretty regular. I like that. Um, it shows consistency. I like consistency. Um, when we get into routines, I think our dogs do better. I know I do better. Um, and most of you will do better, I think, too. Mike Schulte, good morning. Um, yeah, it's amazing how all of a sudden Spry looks like a dog. I walk in the house and they're all laying on their beds and I have to double take to separate who's who. So she is getting a little bit bigger. She's going to be 24 months, I think. Um, 23 or 24, I think 24 months tomorrow. Or not months, uh, weeks tomorrow. So, all right, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to mix it up. Um, kind of the nice thing about this is off leads if you'll notice spry is off lead this morning on her remote sit i usually have the lead just hanging from her neck i've moved it off of her lead or i moved it off her neck um this morning just to, it's a baby step it's a baby incremental step um i am not healing her off lead yet she's not ready for it so um the one thing i'm going to do this morning i'm going to change this uh slightly I typically have, um, and I'm not big on changing, especially when I find a groove and things go well, but I think we have to mix it up a bit. So I'm going to make a slight alteration. What we've been doing is working with Spry, and then we've been making some simple retrieves with Taylor and Ellie. Um, I'm going to reverse that. Um, I'm going to do the simple retrieves with Ellie and Taylor this morning first, and then I'm going to do my heel work with Spry. So the routine is going to be very similar and I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet like I have the last two days and found success. The difference is the order that I'm doing them in. I still, I'm three quarters of a mile into this walk. Down at the end of the road is where my house is. So I've walked down to this point. This is where I get reception. So I'm going to spin that back around. Good morning guys. Again, as you sign on, I appreciate your support. Aaron, good morning. Garlock is in. Um, Without you guys, lives are nothing. <laughs> lives are just videos. So the interaction is really valuable to me. It's really important. It also, it shows me something. Now, live, I get, you can't always go live. You can't always watch them live, and I understand that. But by seeing certain patterns, I'm totally able to notice patterns with those who are consistently be able to watch live and those who are having struggles or success in their training. I don't think it's a coincidence. So if you're watching this, a lot of people are gonna watch this later. I'm not pinning you for not watching it live. What I'm asking is how consistent are you when it's not live and how consistent are you guys with your training portion of things? We got our geese coming out. So let me go get Spry. So again, very simple retrieve is what I'm going to do with Taylor. It's going to be a memory. So this is for you guys. I've noticed a lot of people throwing stuff for their dogs, sending me videos. I've got one that i got to respond to, a couple of them, that people are throwing stuff for their dogs and making retrieves. And I'm fine with that. I do it a little bit with my dogs. 
but you'll notice I get away from throwing things for my dogs really quickly. There's no value in it for a shed dog. Shed dogs don't retrieve sheds that are thrown. Shed dogs retrieve sheds that are picked up off the ground. And the other problem that comes from it is it's easy to get dogs to not be as steady or jeopardize some of the steadiness that you've worked so hard with when you're in the house feeding times and, and steadying them up that way. And then we start throwing things. It gets to dogs that start to move on us. So um, I'm going to take Taylor with me. Trailing memory. I'm big on trailing memories. I'm big on circle memories. I did a really nice handling drill with Ellie yesterday. Um, she struggled with it. She struggled. It was a, a somewhat of a baseball type setup and she struggled with it. Gave her a bunch of options. She had to really start thinking. I couldn't go live because I didn't have any reception. But that is another thing. Just because I don't go live doesn't mean I'm not training. So I think a lot of people go, all he does is go for a walk in the morning. I do. But then I implement things all day long and I practice things all day long. But I did this circle drill um, kind of a baseball style and Ellie really had to start thinking and making decisions based on my hand signals on which direction she should go. She couldn't just assume or she couldn't just guess and she couldn't just go to the one that was the only bumper out there. She had to really start picking between three different bumpers based on my actions. She made a couple of mistakes and I was able to correct it and I think today she'll be better for it. She'll move forward a little bit or she'll, it'll, it'll be clearer to her. I'm going to do the exact same drill with her today. I'm going to do the exact same drill with her tomorrow. And by the time I'm done doing that drill, she'll get good at it. And then I'm going to move it and do it in another spot. Same thing I do with these guys. So trailing memory, this is just an example of it. I'm starting out with what I used to end with. Last week or two, I've been ending with retrieves with the big dogs and honoring with the pup in the beginning. Now I'm starting it out, and then I'm going to work on heel after. So Taylor, heel. Sit. Come on, sit. So this is a nice remote sit, Taylor. Taylor, Taylor, come on. Taylor, come on. Fry is really into this. I love it. Taylor Hughes. Come on. Good. Good. Good girl. Come on. I'm trying to pick her pace up. I'm trying to get her going a little more. Good.
Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Now you can see, Taylor's pretty lethargic. Sit, Taylor. Watch the difference in this dog, Ellie. I'm trying to get this back into Taylor. I'm trying to find it, because since she had her pups, she's been real sluggish. She's been slow moving. She, if you watch back a couple days ago, I got real angry, and it, my thing almost dissolved completely in my session, because when I lined Taylor out on, on blinds, she wants to check in and pop. She wants to turn around and she wants help all the time. I'm trying to get her to stop doing that. And it's gotten to the point now where she's hesitant for me to even send her, for her to take a line. So this, why am I doing such a simple, simple thing? Because I'm just trying to build her confidence back up into just taking a line for me. So she's as far advanced of a dog as I have. She handles really well. She, ah, 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 ah. she does a lot of stuff that's real nice. But but I've, I've made some mistakes and overhandled her and now all of a sudden she's hesitant. So. I'm back to the very beginning and doing very basic stuff to try to get this. Now watch Ellie. So this is a simple sight memory. Watch Ellie's enthusiasm, her drive, her zip, her go. Now she's a young dog. She's going to be two this summer. She's four, going to be four this summer. That's not that old. It's not old enough for me to justify her being slow. She should be really, really going. So I'm trying to get her back to that. Now she's a little bit different personality too and she's pretty calm and cool. She was a person I'd hang out with her. She's cool. But I need to get a little more zip in her. I need to get a little more drive in her. This is what I want to get out of her. This is why I love Ellie. She's really sleek in the field. Watch her, watch her, the difference in her on the way out and back as what it was with Taylor. Just got a little bit another. Ah, 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 ah. Just became too much for this puppet. That's all right. Sit, sit. She's just got. Ellie's just got another gear in her, and that's where I'm. It's Taylor's got it. She's just lost it temporarily. So Ellie's got to get. Ellie's goes really well. Ellie comes back real hard. I love that. I need to get Taylor back to that. She used to do it. She'll do it again. But she's gotten pretty soft. She goes with my wife and visits stores all day long and she rides on the seats of the cars. She never used to do that. So I think there's something to be said about as they get a little bit older, they earn some rights, they earn some things, but they also, we have to be careful the balance doesn't get them too soft. I think sometimes they get too soft. No, oh, I don't know if I want to go. It's a little cold out. No, you go. So I need to find that. I need to get that back with, with Taylor. But I'm going to go right into the same spot because I've got good reception. Ellie, come here. So I got my little retrieves out of the way. I had been doing them as long memories on my way back, and I might get a longer memory in um, on my way back when I'm done. But I'm gonna get right into this. Sit, Ellie. Sit. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Come on, let's go, come on, let's go, come on, let's go. Come on. Sit. Now, Nicole Larson made mention to this um, earlier in the week, said something about, um, she said something about, did, are you all right with Ellie moving around? Now, I didn't, I didn't realize it. I watched the video after. Ellie moved a lot more than I thought she did. So when my, ha when my back was turned to her, she was nowhere near as stationary as I thought. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I don't think it was to the point where it was too bad, but it might have gotten, if I had seen it live, I may have given it a correction. Taylor, sit. So 
these are my little distractions. I put my distractions out. It doesn't have to be dogs. You don't have to have three dogs to do this, but something. And I wouldn't have a distraction when you're starting out with your dogs at home. Again, I want you to just watch this. This is my left-hand side. It's the computer or the whatever phone has reversed it, so be very understanding. This is my left-hand side. When I sent those dogs, I was leaning out over my left side. When this phone is on it, it's completely reversed. It looks like this is my right-hand side. It's not. So I need to make sure that this little slip lead is in the right position, meaning that the circles, the tail is towards me and the circles are on my side so that when I release it, it releases. And when I correct, it corrects. And then it releases, corrects, releases, corrects, releases. If you, and then I want the other thing that you to notice is I'm going to start showing some of these videos from our last workshop because we had a bunch of steers in our workshop. They steer their dog. The other day I walked down the road, or I drove down the road, and I saw five dogs in a row dragging and pulling their owners. I just about pulled over every time. I just can't I have a hard time watching it. But, so, I'm going to heal this dog, and we're going to do some turns. I want you to notice my pace. I'm going to pick the pace up, because she needs to get in a good groove with me rhythm-wise. Once I get going, I'm going to go. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to go. The other thing is, I want you to notice the what I've seen as a positive change in the last two days significantly noticeable to me is her positioning on my right hand turns she's staying with me her speed is picking up so I'm gonna, I've been making real looping turns I'm going to start to sharpen those up a little bit to be the point where I can hopefully do 180s 180 degree turns and keep her up with me she's had the She's gotten in the habit of, because I did so many left-hand turns, she stayed back a little bit, which is smart. She anticipates it, and she turns her body well. She's gotten good at that. We've practiced it. She's gotten good. What it's done is it eroded the right-hand turns. So the right-hand turns, she, she stays back, and it's way hard, and I'm trying to pull her to me, get her to catch up to me a lot like Taylor does. So I'm going to work on those right-hand turns because that's what she's not doing well right now. So I'm trying to pick her pace up, and you're going to hear it in my tone. For every correction I do, there'll be five that are positives. So I don't know that that's always talked about so much, but it just notice how many, and my, pot, my praise is not, oh, you're so good. Not for something like this. It's good, 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 good. All right, so let's get going with this. Starting out with the name, and the other thing I'm going to incorporate is I want to get some sits to the whistle. I might test sit to the whistle today and see how strong it is. It's not strong enough yet. But I might test it to get a feel for where I'm at. Spry, heel. Good. There's where she hangs up. Come on, come on, come on.
to you. Oh. Now she hangs back on me. too slow I can tell right now she's not she's just she's doing it out of it, it's not crisp it's not sharp it's not has nothing to do with this whistle it's because I stop and she takes her time and she one two sit one two sit no I need it real sharp so I'm gonna start correcting that little lag you There she's way behind. You gotta speed up. She's just lagging behind. Come on. First time I've ever walked on from here. Good. Good. Look how slow she is now. By me incorporating that whistle so many times, I've changed her healing rhythm. Now she's way behind me, two, three feet, because she's going, I don't know. Sometimes he wants me to sit, sometimes he blows the whistle. I used to sit all the time anyway. She's confused right now. She's kind of going, defense mechanism is just stay back. Stay back and Taylor, sit down. So she is, I think, on the verge right now mentally of going, What's safe for me to do? It's safe for me to just stay back. So now I need to get her to pick her pace back up. Much like I struggled with to get her pace picked up, and over the last two days I got it pretty good. So now I need to do it again.
Now, one thing I've noticed, I'm just realizing it. You might have seen it a long time ago. She's very slow coming this way. I think it's because every time I'm coming this way, I'm trying to stop the whistle. Because I'm trying to show you guys the stop to the whistle. So I'm always doing it on my way to the camera. Well, she's not dumb. She knows every time we come back this way towards that thing away from those dogs, he's going to start testing me to sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle. So she starts slowing way down. She's much better when I go away from the camera. Right here. Got a car coming. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Get these guys. Come here, Taylor. Ellie's here. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Big girls. Here. Here. And this is a nice little break for her, too, mentally. Sit. 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 So I've noticed that whenever I'm walking this way, she's slow. And I really think it has to do with me stop to the whistle, stop to the whistle, stop to the whistle, stop to the whistle. Always when I'm walking that way. She's anticipating that. And she's going, I'll just stay back because I know I'm going to have to sit pretty quick. But it Walking away from you guys, cut out there for a second, but is way better healing than walking towards you. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's because that's what we've set this up to be. So let me do this. Let me just test the theory. I'm going to move the camera to the other side, face it the opposite way. Ellie? All right, I'm not going to move it. I'm really getting crap reception, so I'm going to try to wrap this quickly here. She did and helped her. Oh, and you missed it. I helped her. I slowed my pace down. I stopped. I put my hand out. I did all sorts of stuff to get her to sit and let me walk by. That's my first step to, be having, to testing her to the whistle and me being able to move past her a little bit and have her sit. Because the test is going to be this. can do that. When I can walk at a steady pace, no sign of change, just my steady pace, blow my whistle and have my dog just sit and me keep going at that pace, that tells me that the power of the whistle is strong enough to stop them. Then I can start working on some of these remote stops with the whistle. But we're not even close to that with, with the pup. Um, now we've got, today we introduced something that gave her a little bit of uh, doubt and a little bit of question in her mind. And that was because I did so many sits in a, in a row, because you have to do that. You have to teach them, sit, sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle. Now all of a sudden she started questioning, is he gonna have me do that again or not? So now I have to get her to be honest. Sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle, sit to the whistle. I do it regularly and patterned and routine to form the habit. And then I start adding it in where it's not, not to be guessed or anticipated. 
but the habit is got to be formed strong enough that it overcomes what she thinks is going to happen and she just sits much like recall to the whistle right yeah. good that's not sitting to the whistle she's got the habit of sitting every time i stop she's in, i'm incorporating a whistle into it what i was saying was it's much like recall to the whistle recall to the whistle happens so many times where she's naturally or instinctively coming to me anyway, and I just incorporate the whistle at the same time, and while she's doing the action, she hears the whistle, beep, 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 beep. She's always running to me when she hears that, beep, 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 beep. So all of a sudden, after so many times of doing that and hearing that, when she hears, beep, 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 she can't help, her body can't help but go, I have to be running towards him. Where is he? And he, she comes running to me. Now the power of the whistle on recall is stronger than a lot of the distractions that she runs into. Because as soon as she's sniffing into stuff and getting into crap, and I test it on this walk back and forth, she's getting into stuff, she's not paying attention, I need her to me, so I go beep, 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 almost always. She just can't help it, she comes running to me. Well, it's because prior to that, we worked on, every time she was running to me, she heard the peeping to the whistle. Habit got formed, habit, now the whistle blasts in a row are stronger than the other distractions or temptations. Same is going to be true with the whistle, sit to the whistle. Sit to the whistle is going to happen so many times when she stops and sits normally, stops and sits normally, she got into the habit of when we stop, she sits, stops, she sits, stop. she comes out of the kennel now and she sits. She comes out of the, uh, goes up to a door, she sits. It has nothing to do with any whistling. It has everything to do with, I, for so many times in a row, I'd bring her out to a door and I'd say sit. Before she'd go outside, she'd have to sit. Now it's a habit. So the habit now is going to get transitioned from heel, sit. Every time, I mean, watch this. I won't blow the whistle. She's gonna do the same thing. Heel, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I didn't blow a whistle, but I got the exact same action. That's because she's been programmed to, when we stop, she sits. Now I'm simply adding in the whistle. So I don't want people to be confused by, oh my God, he just taught that dog to sit to the whistle. No. The dog already knew to sit when we stopped. Now I'm incorporating the whistle and adding the whistle as another switch to turn on sit. Because what I want to use this whistle for is not when she's sitting next to me. When my dog's sitting next to me, I can say sit. Or I can give her a lift. Or I can be in complete control next to her. It's at a distance where I can't go sit doesn't work. I can't I can't stop and have her sit. She's going to be at a distance. So I'm going to have to get out there and have her sit at a distance. This is where I'm this is how I'm going to bridge or connect to get to that. So that's it. I think today was okay. Uh, it got a little long. It was not as good of a lesson as yesterday or the day before, but I will say it was better than Monday. So did I gain something today? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, let me look and see if we got any questions guys if you guys are new to these And I think we do have some new people especially because we're going early in the morning um, This is just fire questions away if you have them and then uh, I, I Always try to add, answer them here at the end um, Which is another good chance. I'll spin show you. I can't allow a mischief. I, 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 I don't allow the mischief so ongoing. We practice stuff during sessions. Come on, come on, sit. We practice stuff during sessions and then we reinforce it all day long. So what did I just do? I moved her a foot and a half away and now it's less tempting for her to mess around with Ellie. So set them up for success. You can also set them up for failure. If I leave her right tight to Ellie, God, why wouldn't she pick on her? Why wouldn't she try to get into trouble? If I left this leash tight to her, why wouldn't she bend over and try to chew on it? I've set her up for success by just positioning her. Simple, simple thing. So, Krista Yisker joined in. Mike Clark was in. Good morning. Jason Erickson, Cody Miller, Joe McAllister. Uh, Trudell Garlocks were in. Good morning, Aaron. Um, Aaron, I owe you an email yet. You sent me a message uh, with a question on training two pups. So, I'll, I'll get back with you on that one. Um, Becky Taylor Rayburn, husband, I believe. Uh, Marty, good morning. James is in, good morning. Uh, James has had some nice progress with his dog. I think I've seen a lot of nice stuff. James has been sending videos. 
um, direct to me and I've seen some nice stuff there Dan good morning Dan I did get your message um, and I res I think I responded back to that video so um, Sam trip is in good morning Mindy good morning how many different things and how much time will you spend in a day it, it's I don't spend separate time training Dan I incorporated my training into my walk this morning this is something I should do anyway go for a walk I need all the exercise I can get so I I incorporated training into it I don't train dog, I don't set time aside for training dogs I build training into my daily life I'm going to the office today I'll be at the shop I'll have dogs with me and they'll be practicing place work they'll be practicing steadiness they might even sneak in a little bit of control when I take them out to go to the bathroom so I'm not setting time aside once we change our mindset to don't set time aside to train your dog instead build your dog training into your daily life dog training becomes easy you how much time do you set aside to raise kids you don't it just becomes part of your life same thing with these dogs um, good morning we will have a new pup in June these sessions are great taking a lot of notes awesome the nice part about them Brenda is you can go back if you're on a mobile device I don't think it allows you to go back to the beginning if you're on a computer it does so I'm trying to work on remedying that um, our YouTube channel if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel there's there's unique content on our YouTube channel it is dog bone hunter as well and I'm gonna be migrating all the live with fries and if you go on a computer you you'll notice there's a whole bunch of other live videos there's a whole bunch of other videos that I've that I've filmed over the years that are just random things of me doing some stuff with some dogs and I had a phone and I, I filmed it so those are all I think there's a little value to all of those so Brenda we're glad to have you with these live sessions um, as we get more puppies which we should be getting more puppies throughout the summer um, I try to space them out every three or four months um, so as we get more the success we found with live with spry watch for the next one because you'll be live with somebody um, and so it'll be something that we can continue to uh, have people connect with closer in ages uh, so that they can follow along similar ages um, Steve from the UP good morning Steve Merrick Malak had joined in uh, Curtis Carlson's in Curtis we're gonna see you in a couple weeks at the workshop Drusilla Miller, good morning. Uh, our outside turns are rough. Need to work on the connection. Inside are getting better, I think because I've been doing more to keep him from getting ahead. But we definitely do some steering. So the steering part can be fixed, Mike, with quick, sharp corrections and then turned off. That's how you, that's how you avoid steering. Steering numbs the level. So it's gotta be on off, on off, on off. And it might be three on offs in the matter of one turn. But as, that's better, three on-offs is better than this throughout the turn. This, here I'll show you. This, this, this is better than this throughout the turn. Because this throughout the turn gets nothing. On-off, on-off, on-off. Now poor Spry goes, what are you doing? She's, I, I'm using her as an example, but you know what I'm saying, Mike. In outside turns, there's, I put emphasis on inside because usually it's harder with the feet. I did that with Spry and she got better at it than she did outside. So now what am I working on? I'm working on outside. I'm not working, I didn't do a single inside turn and worry about her feet today. And I don't know if I did but one or two yesterday and they went well. So I gotta get to work on the things she's not doing well. She's hanging back on those outside turns so that's what I'm working on. Brooke Christine was in, good morning. Chris Borgman, it was, it is a pretty morning here. Um, I'm glad to see how you work with her when she is slow. One of my girls gets very slow after we get back and forth a couple times. It's like she gets bored. Yeah, and sometimes it's we, it, a lot of times how I fix that Emily is in tone, picking up tone. I had a guy ask me about tone the other day. I'm, I'm trying to put together a little thought on it. He, he'd, like, he'd like me to talk more about tone and how that impacts and how I use it with my dogs because tone is more important than words. So sometimes I use excitement, sometimes I use calm, slow, sometimes I really get fast and quick and high. And look at the different attention I get from the dogs when I change my tone. So um, I agree with him, it is important. He wants me to touch on it a little bit more. So I did a little bit, but I'm gonna think about a better way of doing it. But tone is how I fix that a lot of times, Emily. Um, another cool session says calm, all good stuff. Um, we are we are working on, I, I, I try to work on keeping it fresh and keeping it exciting and I get worried that 
people are going to get bored with some of the stuff I'm doing. And then I realized that's what dog training is. It's a lot of boring, repetitious stuff. So the more I try to change it up to keep it entertaining for viewers, the less I'll get done with my dogs. So sometimes it might get a little bit long and uh, a little bit mundane, but such is life and such is training. And I think that's actually probably the value in it is you guys seeing, wow, he does the same damn thing every freaking day with that dog. But slowly, you don't see the changes day to day, but I see the changes week to week. And I see the changes every three days, I see noticeable changes. That's the beauty of this is you don't notice it on the, on the micro, but on the macro, boy, it's big. And then when I, when I think about that and I'm, I'm trying to call three days or a week macro, that is nothing. That's a blink. So it goes back to our conversation with Nicole early, earlier this week. Some of the struggles that were huge, huge struggles that were uh, frustrations to the point of second guessing decisions of getting a dog four weeks ago are go long gone in the past, not even issues anymore. But there's other ones that are big concerns. So it's amazing how quickly this goes. Um, Marie, uh, looks like Kyle and Marie know each other. Make friends at Dog Bone here. Derek joined in, good stuff this morning, thanks. And Cliff, good morning to you. Guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. Again, I think it was a pretty decent session. I feel like I learned some things about this puppy. So um, my sit to the whistles, we took a step in the right direction. And really what it did was it took a step back in our training. And so I realized that, and I shouldn't say a step back in our training, it's just she struggled with it. I took a step forward and she struggled with it. So now that's my base point. That's my point that I have to get better at before I can take the next steps. So Mike Schulte, you've been struggling with the heel work maybe for a while now. It's time for you to figure out those problems and get some fixes, and they're just tiny little fixes so that you, ah, ah, ah so that you can take one baby step forward. So we're gonna, I, I would like to work with you, Mike, on challenging you and, and, and you helping me to figure out how I can help you. But we just need to get you to take a baby step. Once you take a baby step, your base ground changes. Your base spot, your starting spot changes. And then you're just gonna take a little more and then a little more and then a little more, like I've done with Spry. And now I've gotten to the point where Sit to the Whistle has created a little bit of a hiccup in her heel work. I can't stop sit to the whistle. I need it. So I'm going to keep doing it, but I'm going to keep working on some of the hiccups with the heel work and find the balance until I got dogs that get it. And then I'm going to go from that to the next thing. Ellie yesterday went from circle memories to circle baseball. And it really threw a curveball at her. And she struggled with it, and I made some fixes, and I made some corrections with it, and she did well. And today I think she'll do even better. So you guys have a great day. Keep working. Put your plans together and then execute them. They will not happen if we think about them and we don't do the work. Talk with you soon. Have a great day.